ladies and gentlemen, thank you for listening. Thank you for downloading. And thank you for subscribing to the latest edition of the 12 Kyle podcast. I am your boy, 12 Kyle. Check this out. We are going back. How far back you say? We're going back to 1986. On March 20th of that year, Anita Baker released her sophomore album called Rapture. Uh, and we're going to talk about it. We're going to break down the tracks just to give our overall thoughts on the album. And uh, as you can see, if you're watching on YouTube, thank you for watching. Uh, I have a friend with me. Good friend of the show is back in the building. My girl, Trish. Trish, what's up? Hey, how are y'all doing? Glad to be back. Yes. Glad to have you back on, Trish. Um, th- yeah, this this is going to be fun. Um, I, I, I It's... it's it's mind boggling because when we started talking about, you know, doing this, because I normally do album reviews when they hit a, you know, a milestone or whatever like that. Uh, this was, and then, and then I thought about it, I was like, you know, especially with June being Black Music Month, yeah. um, I wanted to feature and just talk about some albums that didn't necessarily have an anniversary date, if you will, right. but, you know, very important albums to the times and the culture at that particular time uh, and just good, feel good music, what we used to call it. Um, and uh, came up with Anita Baker's Rapture album that uh still sits very well with me and and I know you as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so I guess I should start there. Do you remember now? This was '86, Trish. And I, you was outside in '86. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know what? <laughs> so my, my my question to you: Do you remember? Um, just your first overall thoughts and memories of, you know, listening to this. Did you have it on tape? Was it on record or vinyl? Um, what are your What are your overall initial memories of this album? Listen, I could go back before that because mm-hmm. in '83 she did her single "Angel," mm-hmm. and "Angel" was. Everybody, well, I don't know anybody that didn't love Angel. However, um, her voice was very unique. And there were some people who actually didn't like her voice. My yeah. mom was one of them. She was really? like, oh, I don't like her voice. I was like, what? Wow. Yeah. Come on, moms. Me and my sister were big fans of Anita. Anita. So um, when I say we were diehard fans, I guess my sister was probably more of a diehard fan. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I loved her music. I loved her music. So I do remember Rapture. Yes. Mm-hmm. Who? It's Anita Baker. Right. Who doesn't remember those songs? And back then, Anita was it. Anita was everywhere. She was on all platforms. She was on all, well, it was radio back then. But right, right, right. You heard her, her music all the time. So, yeah, her Rapture album did very well. Yeah, I remember. Um, it's funny you mention that because, like, up until I started doing my research on this album, I, and I don't know why, but I thought this was her debut album. And then I saw the thing that said Songstress. So I was like, okay, so what the hell was on Songstress? I was like, I don't remember this album. And the, the, the number one single from that album was Angel, which yeah. is an Anita Baker staple, right? Yep. And so Songstress came out in 83. Yeah. Um, Rapture comes out in 86. Mm-hmm. And we had it on vinyl. And... Um, the thing that I remember about this this album is that, uh, unlike you, my mom played this album to death. Um, I, I grew up in a music. And I always tell people like I grew up in a music household mm-hmm. where my there was always music being played in my house. Yeah, always. Yeah. Um, Sundays, Sunday mornings, you get church music, you get gospel. Sunday afternoons, you could probably you know it. it we probably go back to like the Commodores or you know. Uh, the law, huh? Yeah, par- Parliament or somebody like that, but um, but yeah, because of the era in which we came up, you know, we didn't have like you know like nowadays in my house, everybody walk around with headphones or earbuds and whatever yeah. in your ears, and it's not flowing through the house. But you know, that was one of my memories, um, one of my big memories of being a child 
um, was that my parents always, and I'm talking about Trish, I'm talking about like every day. Music was constantly, I mean, like we would, we, and you probably laugh when I say this, we were the kind of household, like they would turn on the music before they turned on the TV. <laughs> right, right. So, right. Um, you didn't need yeah. the TV once you hit the, put the music on. Right, right, right. So, um, I do that to this day. I mean, I'm, I'm different now because I listen to stuff in my ears. So, but I don't watch as much TV as I used to. Yeah. Um. But um. But yeah, that's the thing that I remember most about this album is that my mom played it, and it's it's funny that you mention about her voice because I do remember there was some I don't want to say haters, but I remember like there was some pushback from some people because Anita Baker's voice and her sound is very distinct. Yes. And she's a I guess you would call her an alto. Her her voice is an alto, probably a second alto, maybe. She's probably uh she can do a range. So right. she can go up to soprano, high soprano, and mm-hmm. uh go all the way down to second soprano. So so you know, she she had a, a very distinct sound, and so she didn't sound like the you know the, the singers note. that were out at the time. That's right. And um so that was interesting too. And then, you know, she was coming from Detroit or whatever. And so, and she wasn't in the quote unquote Motown sound either coming from Detroit. So mm-hmm. she was very, very, very different, I think in that aspect. But yeah, that was one of the things that I found Trish that kind of made me chuckle was like, I was like, damn, I thought this was her first album. I was like, yeah, right. Uh, nah, then, that when you, when you realize that angel came out in 83, mm-hmm. okay. You know, and then Rapture came out, so in '86. So, yeah, mm-hmm. some years between that. She and even before okay, that. So got, go ahead. No, I was gonna say I, I gotta I gotta stump you real. Oh, I gotta ask you a question real oh. quick. Okay. Um. Sidebar. Okay. Angel. Mm-hmm. Who has the better version, Anita Baker or Layla Hathaway? Oh, come on, man. Listen, I love me some Layla. I'm a singer, so you can't ask me stuff like that. But they're both great singers mm-hmm. for their era. I'll say that. Mm-hmm. So you got some diehard Anita Baker lovers. Layla can sing her face off. Mm-hmm. So I'll say, would I say that Anita can sing her face off? Anita can sing. When I say, when I say <laughs> as a singer, <laughs> sing their face off i mean they can blow and layla can blow i mean she just she's like the ninth wonder of the world i mean you, you, you're, stalling, her, Trish, you're stalling she you know what all right well <laughs> listen it's like oranges and apples you know what i mean and layla's version is very nice so you're taking anita no i'm saying I'm which, one, which one are you taking? Gun in your head. You got to pick one. I'm taking Anita because it's classic. Okay. Okay. And that has memories for me. Layla's version is very, very nice. I'm taking Layla. Layla, Layla, can, <laughs> Layla can sing the alphabet. I'm anyway. taking Layla. Okay. Yeah. And I, I just, and that's saying a lot. She finessed it. You know what I mean? Right. It's like, it's just a whole different. It's the same song, but not, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And it's Layla. She made yeah, she made it, she made it her version. She definitely made it her version. I love Layla Hathaway. She always makes it her own, whatever she sings. And like you said, both of them can sing their face off. Um, but I, I just when you said Angel, I, I had to had to sidebar real quick. Um Rapture, this album again uh drops March 20th, 1986. Uh, total runtime of 37 minutes, nine seconds. So relatively quick album. Um, the singles that were released, Sweet Love, Caught Up in the Rapture, Same Old Love, and No One in the World. And we'll talk about, you know, the, the singles in just a few. I mean, I mean in track listing in just a few. Um, when you when you went back and listened to this album, because I when we when we started talking about talking about this album I, I i came yeah i had to go back and listen and i came upon a discovery i went to the good old spotify and this album is not on spotify 
what no it is not on spotify so do you have do you have a physical copy of this album or how did you listen I, to it i do not um but listen i don't even need the album they're in it's like in my <laughs> brain in my psyche mm -hmm. songs and stuff like that i remember i have a memory of rapture album okay Unless you want me to wait until you go sing. No, no, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go I have ahead. a memory of the Rapture album. I have a memory, great memories of Anita anyway, because like mm -hmm. I said, my sister and I, who are six years apart, six years, two weeks apart, um, both love Anita. I honestly think I started loving Anita because my sister loved Anita. Okay. I was the, the younger and you kind of just, you know, gravity. But anyway. Um, big sis. Uh, yeah. So Rapture album, though. I remember um, I had, I was going with this dude uh -oh. from Brooklyn, straight Brooklyn dude, right? Six, seven, big guy. And uh, we went together for like six years. And so I, he went, he ended up going to college. I went to his college at uh, Shaw University and he went HBCU, to HBCU, shout out. HBCU, shout out. It's the only way to go. Mm -hmm. um, he went to Elizabeth City, right? HBCU, and uh, yeah, HBCU, I would go and visit him or whatever. And I remember I was, you know, I'm I'm one of those girlfriends that's always thinking of you, always mm -hmm. thinking of, you know, what I can do for you. So I, <laughs> locally, we had of a spot that we called the flea market. And it was basically this big kind of warehouse place. And you walked around the aisles and there were literally people just, small businesses selling their stuff. So in there was one of those, and I'm sure they were, I guess they were around the country. I'm only from New York, but they had those booths where you could go in and record your own mm -hmm. you know, version of these uh, songs, popular songs, and the bet they would have these average background singers. Mm -hmm. Horrible. But um, at the time, so I went in and I recorded You Bring Me Joy. Uh-oh by Anita Baker because I've been singing all my life, but I recorded it for him and sent it to him. And I remember he called me one time, he was playing the thing on campus, like at level 10 volume. <laughs> what are you doing? He was like, oh, I love it. He was like, listen, you know, people keep walking up to me, asking me who this is. And then I was like, listen, I said, I'm flattered, but yeah, it was for you. <laughs> one of, of um, one of the songs from Rapture, but yeah, mm -hmm. that's what's up. That's what's up, and it, it's funny because, and I'm pretty sure you know this, but maybe some of our listeners don't know this, but that is how Mary J. Blige got discovered, uh, singing so, in one of those one yeah, of those uh, booths like that. Story before, yeah, she recorded <clears throat> like that, and she got discovered. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I didn't know that back then that you could get discovered that way. But yeah, Trish, you could have been, you know. Listen, I've done some nice stuff. I'm not, I'm not where Mary J is. Right, right, now. right, right. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Yeah, it was. Um, yeah, I think, uh, like I said, this this album takes me back. Um, I remember, and it's funny, Trish, because as I was listening, uh, I found myself watching the videos. Oh yeah, um, I watched the video for No One in the World, which ironically was directed by Spike Lee, and he was in the video. What? Yes, it? yes. Go back and watch. It's on YouTube. Go back and watch the video, because um, that's how I had to listen to it. Because again, I don't have it. I don't have it. I don't have CDs anymore. And with it not being on Spotify, I was like, "Oh snap!" So there's, I want to say there's three songs on Spotify, and the rest of the songs I had to listen to on YouTube. But I mean, I remember the songs, but I just, you yeah. Know, anytime I'm reviewing an album, I I make sure that I go back and listen to it because I want to get that feeling again, that vibe. Yeah. And um. It just, you know, listening to it, it, it took me right back to, you know, my mom's living room sitting there right there by the stereo. Yeah, good listening memory. To it. Yep. I'm sure I had the CD back in the day, but. Oh, yeah, yeah. And uh, there was a, a classic uh, live uh, concert that she did that was mm -hmm. really, really good. I forget where that was. I want to say. It was Detroit or. It was either Detroit or D.C. I can't remember. Yeah. But that <clears> was <throat> a nice concert. That was a nice concert. That's when she was in her Rhyme. Yes. In yes, my indeed. Yes, I saw indeed. her recently. Um, really? Because you know she's back out. 
I heard. Oh, we we've heard. <laughs> Not all good things, but it's funny because she had a lot of controversy. I, I guess because I was younger and just kind of loved the music. Mm-hmm. She had a lot of controversy around her about her attitude as an artist and um, timeliness and things like that, which happened at our con- at the concert that I recently went to. Really? Okay. So okay. So we can we can um. <laughs> we, we can sidebar this uh so how was the show that you went to give give us the details uh the show was good once she got up and she was on okay and so I, how, well, how late was she lauren hill late or i i don't know lauren hill late. how late was she, how late is she known to be or he'll be like two hours late okay anita was three hours late wow so yeah and i mean it was so many people there so it was in jersey which is oh so you went to the show in at continental i went to the show at uh prudential prudential i mean prudential yeah yeah yeah. oh oh, that's the show that's the show the controversy had that's the show that had a controversy and babyface got on his instagram and said Mm -hmm. i'm sorry because there were some people i mean i'm sure half the crowd it Maybe more than half the crowd. I like Babyface. I'm not a f- big fan of his, mm-hmm. but I like his music. Um, <laughs> and he, we were waiting for him to be the opener. Mm-hmm. They're on tour together. Yep. Babyface is the opener, then Anita. So his set was up. You could clearly see the set. We had floor seats. Our um, My nieces and nephew brought, my sister and I have birthdays in April, two weeks apart. Okay. So they brought both of us tickets to go. Okay, okay. Floor seats, which when I go to concerts, I don't do floor seats, even though people say they're the best seats. People stand up in front of you. Right. right. I like to see people on the side, right near the stage. Same, same. So anyway, they don't know any better. They just felt like they wanted to give us good seats. Expensive ass seats. Oh, I'm sure. And I don't necessarily care for Prudential Theater itself. But anyway, so we're waiting. We, we we had to wait before they let us in because they did the sound check. We could hear them doing sound check. Wow. Like just before the show. Anybody who's been an artist or been professional, semi-professional, whatever, like I have been, you don't do a sound check just before the show. You Your sound check is done at like 11 o'clock, 12 noon. Mm-hmm. And then when the show time comes, you're on time, you're, you know, whatever. All these people waiting and we're, you know, we're eating, we're drinking at the bar, we're whatever, just wasting time. Still hadn't opened the curtains. Mm. We're hearing them do sound check. People are starting, you know us, folks. (laughs) (laughs) People started to get antsy and they was like, what is going on? You know, heard all this little talk and I was like, you know what? I don't like crowds. So I said, Mm -hmm. I said, you know what? We were up pretty far. I said, you know what? We got our seats. We know where we're sitting. It's not like we got to run for a seat, mm-hmm. you know, like a free for all. I said, let's get out of this crowd and walk to the back in case something pop off. So we did. We went to the back. We sat at a table near the uh, eatery or whatever, and we just waited for people to file in. Mm-hmm. Because there was no need to rush. So anyway, we get in. We had already wasted time. I think by that time, it was already an hour. The hell. And after the time the show was supposed to start. And then uh, we get in there, we sit down, we're waiting. We're waiting. They keep putting the DJ on. Uh oh. You know, music calms a savage beast. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. People were after a while like, listen, right? We're already an hour late. Now it's going on two hours. Now we're like, what is going on? So then people started to make noise, you know, booing or like, what's going on? You no. know. You know us again, right? Right, so New I, Yorkers. <laughs> not even don't don't go there. It's it was New Yorkers wilding. Yo, went. son, where you at, son? Stop it. You need that, where son. I'm gonna throw my Tim's up there. I, I'm gonna have to come in. Come in. <laughs> um, anywhere you would have went, it would have been that way because it's right, just right, right, right. You know, and so and, and and you're not getting any explanation or anything. Thank you. That was I was just gonna say that Ooh. nobody's giving us an explanation, so we're like. So then here's what happened, Kyle. The, the, to make a long story short, uh, the crew that works for Prudential 
came on, Babyface's set was up. The mm-hmm. keyboards, the drums, the da da da. So they have these sets that just kind of slide. Mm-hmm. The crew came on and slid his whole set off the stage. Wow. People started going off, making noise. What are you doing? Da da da. All this kind of stuff. I'm like, what? Oh. I said they are not, and no explanation. So here comes this guy. Lowly little black man, they didn't put him up to it, right? <laughs> Comes out and he's like, My name is so and so, I'm from Potential. Then they started booing him. He said, We're really sorry, we didn't want to have to, uh, you know, let you know this, but um, Babyface will not be performing tonight. Oh my goodness, all his fans went up. What? Are you kidding me? I paid this money for these tickets and baby faces. This is who we can't see. Da, da, da. Okay. So we're like, whoa, what is going on? Like, where is she? So three hours later, she comes out and he said, I promise you the guy, I promise you she will be out. Just give us some. They didn't mm-hmm. want to. I said, just get off the stage because they didn't want right, to. Right, nothing right. his brother had to say. And so then she comes out, her 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 background, her and the band comes out. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure if that was all her band, but they were out there. And even her background, when they got out there, you know, they're doing their little moves because they're playing her music, right? Mm-hmm. And then they start to look like because she still ain't out on stage yet. So they started, all three of them are like, what is going on? Like you could and tell you can tell something going on. What is up? And so here she finally comes out, you know, the grandiose, whatever. She looked good. Mm -hmm. She has a little limp to her. So Mm -hmm. age is whatever. Um, But she still looks good. She still looks like herself. Her voice is Anita, like it always was. Okay. So the show was good. But in the meantime, though, by the second hour, when they pushed Babyface's uh, set off, he got on his Instagram and he said, mm-hmm. I am so sorry to my fans that we couldn't perform tonight, but they asked us not to perform so that Anita could do her full show. And so people started on, you know, on the phone. Everybody got their phone out. Right. You, Babyface said such as a look, look, look. Everybody started showing everybody. <laughs> it was a whole thing. Bad news travel fans. <laughs> It very fast. And needless to say, at the end, uh, she did a good show. I felt uh, it was lackluster because I had lost my excitement. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's like you go there, you're ready to see a show, you're ready for her to get down, you're ready to see Babyface and then her, whatever. And then you're waiting, waiting. It just dampers the whole thing for me. Yeah. Other people, so she came out, I need a, da, 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 you know, popped up or whatever. But I was just like, I just sat and listened. I don't, I'm not one of those people that needs to stand up at every song, at a concert. I'm also respectful of the people behind me. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, she did good. Her voice was pristine. It really was. But yeah, I got, okay. we, we got her, my sister, actually. She was on it because she's retired. So she spent her days emailing people and this and this, this and this and that and got a full refund for my nieces. Mm. So, but wow. I heard a lot of people got got their money back for that show, so they didn't make a whole lot of money. <clears throat> for that show. Yeah, I mean, like that uh, that concert was the controversy, and you know, Trish, you laid it out, and I, I didn't. I'm it's crazy because I didn't even know that you went to that concert. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and and if you're at the time of this recording, uh, it's still like there's still some fallout from it because like um, you know, Babyface. He didn't say like he did, he said exactly what Trish said on his Instagram, and so now, according to Anita on social media um, on Twitter, <clears throat> she said that Babyface fans were quote unquote attacking her. So anybody sending any smoke to Anita Baker on Twitter, she's blocking them. And it's funny, Trish, because just yesterday, uh, somebody that I follow retweeted something. And they just had like, it was, I guess, um, they tried to tweet Anita Baker and it showed that they were blocked. So they just sent a screenshot of the blocked and it says, you've been blocked by Anita Baker. 
and she she posted on her Instagram and her Twitter that you know she would not be um, denied by these you know um, I can't remember the word she used but she didn't call them trolls but she was just like and she even added babyface and was like look you need to tell your fans to calm down like this wasn't the sister situation like I didn't but it on the outside looking in it looked like she prevented him from performing yeah and it, that's what it sounds like to me, but she's saying that that's not what happened. Yeah, if you looked at Babyface's uh, the the post, mm-hmm. he didn't necessarily say, you know, that it was Anita's fault necessarily. Mm-hmm. He just said so that Anita, who is the headliner, mm-hmm. you know, if you know professionally, she is the headliner, um, so that she could do her full show. They asked us not to go on. So how was Anita the headliner when you got Babyface? But because Anita, old school Anita coming back out. But, but Trish, Trish, Babyface is one of the greatest of all time. Listen, he's great and he's written a lot of songs, but he exactly. had to do Anita. So, I mean, that now that's a, when I heard that news, that surprised me. I was like, wait a minute, Anita nah, Baker's a headliner? He's classic. It's like he. You know, she asked him to be on that or however it works. Right, right, right. No, I get it. I get it. I get it. So, you know, it's just, but she has a reputation. And I had heard, Mm -hmm. I was talking to one of the uh, uh, ushers. And he was Mm -hmm. saying, he said, you know what? He said, I heard they did the same mess in uh, Atlanta, which I hadn't heard about that show. He, But he said that they were late to that show as well. And I was like, well, they don't need to start that off because that's really not good. And I think that Babyface went on and said what he said that night mm-hmm. so that he could save his reputation. Right. He's got whole slew of fans in there, too. Right. So, you know. And so it is, do you know if he's still on tour with her or? I heard after that that he did still tour with her. Okay. Okay. Um, and I think it's a, even if he didn't want to, it's a contract thing. Mm, yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. So it's like he he's making money. He's promised a certain amount of money. So is she. And so he's like, wow. I don't have to talk to her. That's like, listen. <laughs> I know somebody who was the manager for uh, Salt and Pepper, mm-hmm. and they couldn't stand each other. Yeah. They barely talked. They didn't want to be on the same flights together. Stuff like that. I mean, so you can make it happen. Yeah. It's still not, you know, the audience don't have to know. No, they don't have to know. I mean, and that, but that you even, like you said, Anita, um, and it's something I've heard and I know you've heard over the years, like she's had a reputation as far as being difficult to deal with. Yeah. Um, somewhat of a diva, if you will. Yeah. yeah. And um, that's not a good look, particularly for somebody going back out on tour and then having something like this happen. And this happened early in the tour because this. Oh, yeah. It was like, I think the Prudential show was what, the third, second or yeah, third? Yeah, second or third show, right. I was like, geez, they starting out bad. But you know what? The one thing that did happen at the show was that um, she kept having to tell the sound guy she was teaching him how to do the levels. She oh, was like, Lord. okay, turn down this and do this because the mics kept ringing. Oh, and okay. It kept, and it kept giving her, a, you know, like a a, a re- reverb or mm-hmm. feedback and uh she stopped I, if i had to count probably like five or six times Damn. telling him sweetheart do this do this do this and that's what happens at sound check but if you don't have sound check then you even know that right so i mean for for an artist of the two artists of that caliber yeah, you shouldn't have those kind of that. Problems. That sound should have been pristine. So, so Anita Baker is on the Lauren Hill timeline, um, but we're going to talk about Rapture. <laughs> yeah, right, back to <laughs> back Rapture. to Rapture. Um, so let's let's get into it. Like I said, it's only um, thirty seven minutes, and there there's only eight tracks. So if you bought yeah. the tape. If you bought the tape, you had four on on side A and four on side B. Mm -hmm. Uh, The album starts off with the song uh, Sweet Love. Um, What's your thoughts on Sweet Love? Sweet Love is Sweet Love it starts with. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, Sweet Love. They're all great. They're all great. It's like some of them, everybody, first of all, they need a song everybody knew the lyrics to. Mm-hmm. Anytime they played, everybody's singing. Even at the concert, everybody was singing the songs. I mean, mm-hmm. uh, 
you just it they just get etched in your memory. So do you have any special memories or, or about sweet love? Mm, not in particular. I mean, my <laughs> my um my brother and sister had a band. Okay. Back in those days, and they she my sister loved Anita Baker. They did a lot of Anita Baker songs and of course, Sweet Love was on the list. So I love that song, I, and I mean, like you said, yeah. it 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 still is one of those songs. We're talking 1986, and it still feels good in 2023. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, and then track two, "You Bring Me Joy." Now I do have a memory from this one. Um, there was a talent show that I went to when I was in high school, and this girl sang this song, and Trish. The only thing that she got out of her mouth was you bring me. And everybody else said <laughs> the crowd went crazy. You couldn't hear nothing else because mm. everybody knew she could sing. And um, yeah, I mean when I say she won that talent show hands down, like right. oh, oh my gosh. And I mean, like she sounded just like Anita Baker. Really? She was that good. She was that good. Yeah, that's pretty unique right there. Especially with Anita sound, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I, mean I can sing an Anita song, which I have, but I'm not Anita. I'm not, right. you know, my voice is not similar to hers, but right. yeah. Sweet love. I mean, all the songs were just like memories, memories, memories. Yeah. Then we get to track three, Caught Up in the Rapture. Um, that, that, that song still, it just. That was a really nice one. Yes. It just, you know, it just flow all her songs, but that one just kind of flows. Flows, yes, yes. Uh, then track four, uh, Been So Long, which is a track that she actually wrote by herself. Mm -hmm. um, which is something that you didn't really see a lot, you know, uh, back in the 80s, you know, artists writing their own songs. Right. Um, but Been So Long is a little, I ain't even going to say, no, it's, it's not up tempo. It's, it's a little. It's jazzy. Jazzy. That's the word I was looking jazzy, for. And it was jazzy for that for back then. I mean, you mm -hmm. know, kind of could call her a jazz artist per se. You know what I mean? Uh, but she could fill a couple of genres the way mm -hmm. she was and the way her songs were. So yep. Then we get to track five, Mystery, written by the late great Rod Temperton. Oh yeah. <sighs> Listen, Rod Temperton, look him up if you if you're not familiar. Yeah, you're familiar. Yeah, yeah. Rod Temperton can write. Did could and did write any and everything. Listen, and they're the ones that make the money, the writers. Yes. I'm like, dang, I need to start yes. writing some. <laughs> they make some dope. Yeah, he, I, he. I'm sure he made quite a few with all of the hits and songs that he wrote. But it's a beautiful song, and and Anita carries that song very well. And speaking of writing songs, that's like Babyface. Babyface has written stuff that people don't even know he wrote. Man, listen. He's like y'all. Y'all remember the verses? <laughs> yeah, he's got a plethora of songs. That's just forget it. And then uh, we get to track six, uh, "No One in the World," that I mentioned a little earlier. Um, like I said, real cool video. Uh, I like the concept. Like I said, it was directed by Spike Lee. Spike appears in the video mm -hmm. as well, so check that out. Uh, then um, "Same Old Love" is track seven. Mm -hmm. uh, a little bit more up tempo. Just a little bit more up tempo. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the album closes with uh, number eight, track eight, Watch Your Step. Um, yeah. <clears throat> was there any songs on here that you, which were, I don't want to say that you don't like, probably your least favorite song on the album. Oh, least favorite. I didn't think you're going to go there. Um, you Bring Me Joy was the one that I sang at that little thing. So for my okay. um, but Maybe watch your step. Watch yeah. your step wasn't as popular as the other ones, so I guess it was. Yeah, it was like a mid tempo. Yeah, and I think it kind of sounded like a throw in to me when I listened to it again. Yeah, they needed another song, to right? Make. Right, because yeah. you know what's interesting, Tris. Like when I looked at the track listing, I remember all the songs, and then when I got to watch your step, I was like, watch Yeah, step. I don't remember that joint. Yeah, they the people kind of threw that one to the side. I think. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's my least favorite as well. What about your favorite song on the album? Hmm. That 
That's hard. <laughs> I would say uh, caught up in the rapture. Okay, okay. That's hard to do, but I would say caught up in the rapture. I, my favorite is probably still sweet love. Sweet love, yeah, yeah. When it, when I hear those, when I hear that piano come in, man, listen, you just <laughs> you got memories. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. That was, I mean, that. that Sweet love was on the was on the quiet storm every night. Yeah, yeah. yeah was, was, listen, when she was hot, she was hot. Mm-hmm. That, and when she was in her prime, that's it. She was tough to deal with. That's it. <laughs> um, what what do you think the overall? If you had to kind of break down for somebody who ne- wasn't necessarily around when this album came out. Uh, what, do, what do you think the impact was on not just the fans, but just music in general, R&B in, in particular? Mm. Um, I'll say that's when R&B for females was really good. Right. Um, if you think about R&B right now, male and female, it's not the same. Um, and Female R&B was bigger back in the day. You know, you had more female artists doing R&B and really nice songs. Um, mm-hmm. So I think she kind of set the pace <clears throat> for people, female artists back then. Mm-hmm. She was unique. Um, but when you, if you talk to a lot of female artists, um, she definitely had an influence on their career or their path and how, you know, how they sing. There's a little Anita in everybody. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I agree. <clears throat> I think I learned about her is that she started in uh, the late the seventies mm-hmm. with a band called Chapter Eight. Yep, which I had never heard of, and uh, I was like, "Oh, interesting." <laughs> never heard. I did hear a song called uh, "I Just Want to Be Your Girl" by Chapter Eight, and she's singing. She's the lead on it, and okay. uh, she has a much smoother. You could tell she was young. But she has a a much right. sweeter, sweeter voice on that. But, okay, yeah. okay, yeah, I think um, I agree with what you said. I mean, I think this album was very pivotal at that particular time because, um, you know, R and B, particularly for the ladies, was like you had to come with it. Like, right. and while this, if you listen to Songstress, it doesn't sound like this. This album was, you know, definitely out of there. And yeah. it showed her growth and development in between both albums. And, um, you know, one of the things that stood out to me, even back, even as a kid back then, was that she was from Detroit, but she didn't have that Motown sound. And, and I guess in my mind, as a fan of music, I just kind of associate everybody from Detroit with Motown. Right. Um, and she wasn't really, you know, paired with anybody per se. Yeah. Um, Very unique. But this album was this this was a cold album back then. Mm-hmm. And I mean it still is to this day. And you know, RB back then, you had to sing. Oh, no question. It wasn't like you had stuff that was uh, you know, covering your voice in the studio and stuff oh, like no. that. I mean, but for the most part, everybody female RB artists back then, if you heard them live, they were singing. Yes. It wasn't just, you know. I mean, we're talking 85, so let's just think about some of the artists that were making, the female artists that were making R&B music at the time. Shaka, Patty, um, I don't want to say Whitney, because that wasn't necessarily R&B, but yeah, singing. Like regular, like, you know, out flat singing. They were singing. 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 You know, and if you heard Shirtle them in. in live, yeah. Yeah. I mean, the Everybody list goes on and on. Melissa Morgan. Oh my God! I used to love Melissa Morgan and uh, um, Howard, Mickey Howard. Mickey, oh, Mickey Howard was so dope. I used to love Mickey. Phyllis Hyman. Yes. Come on, yes. I mean, like, these are. I mean, and for those of you listening, if if you don't know any of these people that we're mentioning, get familiar. These were singers, like Trish mentioned a little earl- earlier. Sing your face off, because here's the thing. And this was like an unwritten rule in R&B. If you sang it on the record, you had to sing it live like that. So like you you couldn't, 
we expected you to sound like that. right 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 you weren't gonna go to budweiser super fast and be sounding janky they were gonna boo you off the stage yeah that's right so and yeah phyllis, it's funny phyllis heim i put up a picture the other day uh an old school picture of me singing at a talent show at really? high school yeah i posted you put it on facebook yeah Oh, I got I got to go back and look at it. It's me standing there and with a mic in my hand singing and uh somebody said you look like a young Phyllis Hyman. I was like, "Oh, oh I'll take that compliment." Thank so you. is the audio too or you just a picture? No, just the picture. Oh, oh. Trish. I want to hit a song. Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. So before we get out of here, I got to ask the question that I always ask anytime we do album reviews. Um, I think I know the answer, but I got to ask it anyway. Is this album a classic? Absolutely. Absolutely. It's something that if you were anywhere near that era, or like you said, your mom even used to hear mm -hmm. your mom just playing. It's classic. You think yes. of the songs, you know where you were, you know, around the time, the era that you were in. You, you remember singing the songs or you went to a concert it's it's classic when you get memories like that from an album and the other thing about uh, albums back then most of them you could play from beginning to end and not, and not have to skip a song oh, no. that's what you know the album i mean good. i mean yeah. you and i both said watch this that was the was our least favorite song and it's the last song in the album so yeah i mean well, you've already gotten 35 plus minutes of exactly. dope music exactly <laughs> yeah and sang along with all of them so all of them yeah classic definitely i think anita is yeah. anita is classic yeah I, I agree a thousand percent i think um one of the things that i enjoyed about going back and listening to that was just not only just sing and like i told you when i um when we decided to do this album review I had not listened to this album in its entirety in a good 10, 15 years. And now I know why, because it ain't on streaming. So, right. so I, so you can't I, know I, I I didn't even know that. I didn't even know you couldn't really find it. It's yeah, like, I got I got the CD somewhere around here. It's somewhere, I think I got a box full of CDs in my garage. It's probably in there. Um, but I do know that I bought that CD twice um, because you somebody scratched, scratched it. Oh, somebody scratched it. Yeah, um, scratch CD. So, uh, so I know I have it. So I did, con I, I did give her some of my dollars. Um, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, it, it's uh, it's an album that you know never gets old. So, I, anybody listening or watching on YouTube, make sure that you check it out, even if it's not on streaming. Like I said, you could listen to a couple of songs on streaming, and then you can go you, go to YouTube and watch the video, her videos on YouTube. Incredible album. Mm -hmm. uh so this this has been a great trip down memory lane trish before we get out of here uh any uh anything you want to promote or uh tell the people or mm -hmm. tell you where they can find your social media anything like that sure i have a online business small boutique um it is zawadi enterprises llc zawadi being z as in zebra a w a d i you can find me okay, on facebook okay. and instagram website to come so okay okay so check that out um you guys have been listening this long you know where to find me uh 12 Kyle podcast drops every thursday at midnight we drop bonus episodes on sundays as well uh 12 kyle across the board on the socials if you feel so inclined hit us up on cash app dollar sign t-w-e-l-v-e-k-y-l-e -E -E. again that's gonna do it for us uh for my girl trish i am your boy 12 kyle this has been an album review Anita Baker's Rapture. Uh, we'll catch you guys next time. 5,000. Bye.